My name is Tim and welcome to the Decent Garage. Recently I swapped the automatic transmission out of my truck for a six speed manual transmission. It was a ton of work and if you haven't watched those videos, make sure to go watch them. But the internet has not been shy in letting me know that I haven't completed the full manual swap. Apparently you can do all the work involved with doing that swap, which I did in those videos, but if you don't remove the automatic column shifter, you only did a half ass job on the swap. So in today's video, we have to finish a few details to make the swap complete. The two main things we need to do is remove the automatic transmission shifter and hook up the TK so that we can shift the truck into four wheel drive. So we've got those things to do, so let's get started. We need to get our transfer case shifter installed so we can actually shift the truck into four wheel drive. We still have some pretty old worn out shift boots for both the transfer case and the G56 that we probably need to swap out for something a little nicer. All right, we've got all the old shift boots taken out. That was fairly easy, but now we need to install the transfer case shifter. So what I'm gonna use, this is the bracket that Charlie Pitcher makes. You can go to his website. These are 80 bucks. This is custom designed for the G56 to have the NP205 shifter mounted to it with stock bolt locations on the G56. So this is a very awesome piece, 80 bucks on his website. All right guys, I got it all mocked up on here. I actually mocked it up onto the transmission and there's two little adjustments that we need to make. First, the shaft that goes back to the transfer case is about three quarters of an inch too long. So we're gonna cut that, cut out about two, half inch, three quarters of an inch and weld it back together. The other is, you can see how I've kind of bent this shifter. Uh, I just did that, normally these are straight, but I need to bend that more because we have to have a little S curve because the G56 is wider than the G360. All right guys, we got it all ready. You can see the bend we put in it right there. All ready to go, got it hooked up. Shorten the rod about a half an inch. So there's not very much room or light under the truck to show you this, so I'm gonna show it to you on this transmission. You pull these three bolts off, mount it there, and then there's one more bolt here. I bought a little plastic spacer that's about a quarter inch thick to put between here and here, uh, and then that's all I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go under there myself bring it up through the shift hole and uh, we'll get it all installed. All right, so the shift boots I got are from Stronghold Shift Boots. Nice quality, um, I don't know if it's real leather, I don't know, but it's insulated, so it should help with some noise reduction. Got the one for the transfer case and for the shifter. And the Stronghold Shift Boots actually attach right to the factory base of the transfer case and the transmission shifter. So now we're gonna put the shifter boot on. Now I don't have the shift base for the get track. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna attach it to the floor for now. Once I get a factory base, I'll install that. And this does install right onto the factory base, but this will work for now.
Real quick, before we start taking the automatic transmission shifter off the column, I've had a lot of people asking about Lieutenant Dan. Let me give you a quick update on where we're at with this project. So here we have Lieutenant Dan. You guys haven't seen him for a long time, but I've made a lot of progress on it. So let me show you what I've done. I have brand new fenders in, rust-free fenders. They're all in. I found the paint that I'm gonna use. This is the color right here. I've got this fender painted. I did the windshield frame and then a little bit over here just to test it out. But I think it looks perfect because we're going back to the army green on this. I've got the dash all put back together, got the wiring put back together. I had to fix the wiring harness. There was a part that was completely melted in there. If you watched the videos a long time ago on the Jeep, you'll know that this, these two areas is where I had to do most of the rust repair, so that's all done. I have a tailgate that's a different one than what was on it, and it's pretty clean. Uh, so we got to get that painted. Anyways, got the back buttoned up, got an exhaust made for it, frames all painted, everything underneath is painted, all the rust is taken care of. So we were gonna do that Kubota swap, I decided not to, we're gonna keep the 258 straight six, it's a great running motor, 30,000 original miles, I'm still gonna rebuild the carb and I need to buy a new radiator. Once I get that, this thing's ready to fire up and ready to go. So my goal is to have this thing completely done June 25th, 2022. There is an event at the Veterans Home by me in Payson, Utah, where my grandpa lives, and he's the one who gave this to me, and it's an army jeep, so it's perfect for the veterans. So I'm gonna have it completely done for that. January 25th, 2022, if you wanna come check it out, come to that show. Now is the moment you have all been waiting for. We have to get rid of the automatic shifter. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull the whole gauge bezel off, I'm gonna pull the column plastics off, and then I'll show you how to remove the column shifter. All right, so we have the gauge cluster pulled out. Down here you can see where it says park, reverse, neutral, drive, two, one. So we have to pull that off. It's very easy. It's a matter of pulling these two screws off. We'll get those pulled off, and then the manual trucks come with this little block off plate. So that's what we're gonna throw in there, and uh, it should look like it was a factory manual truck. Well, I ran into a little bit of an issue. These are two different styles, so I don't know if the intercool, the non-intercool is different, or the gasser and non-gasser, but the screw holes don't line up. What I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna install this right now, I'll just hold on to this one. So with those being different, and I can't use the actual block off plate, what I'm gonna do temporarily is just throw a piece of electrical tape right over the lettering on the original plate just like that. This is just a temporary fix. I suppose you could do this if you wanted it to be a permanent fix because it'll work. So uh, we'll throw this back in here. All right, there you can see it is completely blocked off. You can't see the indicator anymore. That looks good. So now that we have that block off plate done, let's go take the automatic shifter off the column. And that's what you all are waiting for. So let's get it finished up and then we'll have a complete manual swap on this truck. So some of the parts that I source for this, like the column plastics and the block off plate, they're super hard to come by. But there's a guy named Mark Taylor at TaylorMade Garage who has tons of parts and all you have to do is message him and he'll see if he can get them. He's the one who came through with these for me. Go check him out. He can find pretty much any part that you're looking for. Some of the OEM original parts that you need for projects like this. So real quick, I'm gonna take the plastics off the column so we can have access to the base of the shifter. All right, I got the column plastics pulled off and you can see where the shifter attaches to the column. Now, a lot of guys say just pop the roll pin out of here, which you can do that. The problem is the manual column plastics won't fit over this chunk of metal right here. So uh, I'm not even gonna pop that pin. What I'm gonna do is get a sawzall and make a cut right here and cut it off. And then once we have that off, because the shift lever won't be in there, this is just gonna flop around. So what we're gonna do is JB weld it to the column so it doesn't flop around. So let's get that cut off, get it JB welded, and it'll stay there, and then we can button everything back up. 
So first I'm going to cinch up the column back into the dash so that we can minimize the vibration of the sawzall. Just glob this all over. We just don't want it to move anymore. So the manual column plastic's a little bit different. I mounted the bottom one up and you may be able to see right here, there's a, a bolt that goes through here, which that isn't there on the automatic one. This is where the shifter's at. Uh, so it's running into this so you have two options and you can either get a Dremel and, dr and grind this out so that you can fit that through there or you could just not use that bolt. Either way would probably work. I'm going to try and Dremel this out and see if we can get that space for that bolt to go through there. All right, so the grinder worked really well on that. So I have that notched out for that little piece in the plastic. So we can now put the plastics back on and get everything buttoned back up. Well guys, that puts a close to the manual swap on the OG crew cab. We'll see how that goes and see what the negative Nancys have to say now. But for me, it's done enough. So we have a lot more work to do. We're still doing performance upgrades on the OG crew cab. We've got the engine built for Long Bed Larry and I am starting body work on that. Also, we are almost done with Lieutenant Dan. We're gonna do a full video on that, show you where I'm at and get it completely done, ready to roll. So we got tons of stuff to do here in the coming weeks. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.